Welcome back. In this next video, I'll be talking about Dalton's law of partial pressures. Usually we talk about the law of partial pressures and um, we add um, Dalton's name to it because he actually proposed the law. Now the law of partial pressures, if um, it will be stated simply, says that the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is the sum of their individual pressures. Now this is very simple and straightforward. If we have um, four persons contributing a total amount of, um, let's say, one million naira, it will simply mean that one million naira is the sum of their individual contributions. So if I have 10 naira, you have 20 naira, the other person has 50 naira, and we bring these together, our total money would be the sum of our individual monies, and that would be 80 naira. So in like manner, the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is simply the sum of their individual pressures. So assuming we have a mixture of gases A, B, and C, where the pressure of A is PA, that of B is PB, that of C is PC, then the total pressure they will exert will be PA plus PB plus PC. Now there's a small requirement that must be kept for this law to remain valid, and that is the gases A, B, and C must not react. If they react, then this will not be true. So, if we we'll state Dalton's law of partial pressures, it simply states that the total pressure exerted by a mixture of gases is simply the sum of their individual pressures as long as the gases do not react. Now, having said this, there are different expressions that we use for solving questions on Dalton's law of partial pressures. One of them is on the board already. Now, there are some more I would add. Look at this next one. It says, of course, the dot I put here represents the multiplication sign. So if I would read this out, it says, the partial pressure of A in a mixture of A and other gases is equal to the mole fraction of A multiplied by the total pressure. So at this point, I'll have to tell you the meaning of mole fraction. Now, assuming we have three gases, A, B, C, mixed this way, one mole of A, two moles of B, and three moles of C in a mixture, and they do not react together, then the mole fractions of A, B, and C will be calculated as follows. First, I will need to add up all the numbers of moles. Three, two, one gives me six moles in all of all the gases. And then I'll say the mole fraction of A is the number of moles of A over the total number of moles. Simple. And this is one over six. So that's the mole fraction of A. Then if I want the mole fraction of C, I'll say mole fraction of C equals 3 over 6, which of course is 1 over 2. So mole fractions are usually calculated as the mole fraction of any component is the number of moles of that component divided by the total number of moles. Now, two things you must know about mole fractions are 1. Mole fractions usually do not have units. They are dimensionless. So mole fractions do not have units. And then second, mole fractions are usually never greater than one. In fact, they are never up to one. As long as you have up to two gases, they can't reach one. So having said that about mole fractions, I'll quickly tell you, by the way, what this term means, partial pressures, because most times we gloss over it, we, we say much about Dalton's law without really defining partial pressures. So let me tell you what the partial pressure of a gas is. We say that the partial pressure of a gas in a mixture of gases 
is the pressure that the gas would have exerted if it were alone in that same container. So look at this now. Let's say we have two gases in a container, gas A and gas B. And gas A were exerting a pressure of 10 atmospheres, while gas B exerts a pressure of 20 atmospheres. So it will mean that the total pressure exerted by the mixture is 30 atmospheres. So that container where you have A and B present, the total pressure within it would be 30. But what if the B were removed? The pressure within that container would no longer be 30. The pressure within that container would be 10. So the 10 atmospheres is the partial pressure of A, and that is the pressure that A would have exerted if it were alone in the container. So we say out of the 30, the contribution of A, 10, is the partial pressure of A, and that is the pressure that A would have exerted if it were occupying that container alone. Now there's this other formula I'd like to give you. We use it for solving some questions on Dalton's law of partial pressures. We write it as P1 over N1 equals P2 over N2. At some point, you will need this formula. There are some simple questions on Dalton's law that require just this formula, and you're okay. Now, I'll give you a few questions on Dalton's law, and let's see how we can solve them. Let's solve these two questions on Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now, looking at the first one, it says a mixture contains 20 grams of neon, 4 grams of hydrogen, and 48 grams of methane. Given that the total pressure exerted by the mixture is 18 atmospheres, determine the partial pressure of each gas. Now, if you see um, what we're given there, we're not given the amount of each gas, we're given their masses. And because we're given masses, we can't proceed immediately. So we need to calculate the amount of each gas from the masses provided. Of course, back to that basic formula that says number of moles equals mass over molar mass. So that if we were to apply this to get the number of moles of the first gas, neon, it becomes um, 20, that's the mass of neon, divided by the molar mass of neon 20 and that gives us one mole so one mole of neon then the second gas is hydrogen number of moles of hydrogen is the mass of hydrogen 4 divided by the molar mass of hydrogen 2 and that gives us um, two moles all right so this is 4 grams and this is 2 grams per mole. And then the last one is um, which gas now? Methane. Methane is CH4. So its mass is 16. And that means therefore that mass over molar mass becomes 48 over 16. And that gives us 3 moles. So now that we have converted the masses to moles, we can get their mole fractions or just go ahead and calculate. How do I mean? We can say partial pressure of neon equals the mole fraction of neon times the total pressure All right so that if i were to go by this let me go back now and say partial pressure of a gas is mole fraction of the gas by total pressure so i don't need to rewrite that again so i can go ahead now and say partial pressure of the first gas neon equals the mole fraction of neon is one out of six times 18. So 18 divided 6, that is 3 atmospheres. Then the partial pressure of the second gas, hydrogen, will be equal to what now? 2 out of 6 times 18. So 36 divided 6 is 6 atmospheres. And then the last one, partial pressure of methane, will be equal to 3 out of 6 times 18. And that gives me 9 atmospheres. Now if you add up the pressures that we just obtained, 3 plus 6 plus 9, it gives us 18. And that, of course, is the total pressure we're given in the question. So you see, the basic thing here is I had to first convert all these masses into amounts. Because the formula it gave us before says the partial pressure of a gas is the mole fraction of that gas in the mixture times the total pressure. So with that, I was able to get all of their respective pressures.
Then for the second question, it says a mixture of gases, two gases now, X and Y, exerts a pressure of 1,000 millimeters of mercury. That's the total pressure. Now, out of the total 1,000, we are given that the partial pressure of X is 400. Now, you should realize that the partial pressure of Y would be the remainder, which is 600. So, I'm coming up here to write for number 2 now. Partial pressure of X equals 400. Whereas, the partial pressure of Y is 600. And then, from here... I would say, if I'm to determine the mole fraction of Y, remember, partial pressure of a gas equals the mole fraction of that gas times the total pressure. So now that I need mole fraction of gas Y, it will be equal to what now? Partial pressure of gas Y over the total pressure. So the mole fraction of Y becomes partial pressure of Y, 600 over 1000 the total so 600 divide 1000 gives me the mole fraction as 0 0.6 so 6 over 10 is 0 0.6 and that is the mole fraction and that agrees with what we said earlier that mole fraction is never up to one for a mixture of gases so our answer is in order now having seen this too like i told us once in a while we encounter cases where we need to remember the other formula I gave to you, P1 over N1 equals P2 over N2. So subsequently, if you meet examples on um, Dalton's law of partial pressures, remember the steps we took and make sure you take them. Hopefully, you'll arrive at the answers. Now, beyond this, I'm going to make the next video, which will be on a very important law. We call it Graham's law the law of diffusion some call it the law of diffusion and effusion but effusion is nothing but diffusion through a pore through a porous pot you understand so based on that we say graham's law is simply the law of diffusion i'll talk about it but for now i'll add a next video which will only be available to subscribers and the title of that video would be why real gases deviate from the gas laws it's a very important concept most times we see persons talk about real gases not obeying the gas laws so i'll tell you why they do not obey the gas laws and how we can force them to obey the gas laws that video will be exclusively for subscribers but the next video that will be available to the public would be the video on graham's laws of diffusion so i'll see you in that video